Ooh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu, and I am your co-host, TMD. We want to thank our main sponsor for the evening. That's going to be Knox Pro, uh, Knox Pro Entertainment, located here in Van Nuys, California. To find out all information, Knox Pro, log on to the World Wide Web at www.knoxpro.com. Big keys. Welcome back. You are a man on the move as always. How you doing? I am good, Joey. It's good to see you and the crew. My man Frank, my man David over there, busy at work. And we in the studio. We in the house here in hot-ass Los Angeles. Speaking of hot, you are coming back from Texas. Yeah. Where it is way hot, right? I mean, how how, how was it? How was your trip out there? It was great. You know, I got a chance to, uh, you know, go out there. was invited uh, by Dwayne Duke, uh, uh, Man- Many Weather. Uh, it's an old line mastermind. So, and they run this event uh, yearly out there. And pretty much uh, a lot of the old lines of college players, uh, NFL players, uh, uh, NFL uh, Hall of Famers. And this is also here, Duke. You know, he's actually from out here okay. uh, out in Compton. You know, mm. he, it's funny because we follow each other on Instagram. And the word we just start conversating, you know, uh, about Rodney. It was a small world. Mm-hmm. So he used to go to school out there with Yoko out, you know, out in uh, oh, wow. Wilmington. You know, so that took off. And, you know, I, my interest came because, you know, I'm always like, you know, kind of uh, when I see things on Instagram, I'll send it to my son, Samson. Mm-hmm. And just, hey, listen to this guy. Hey, listen to, you know, listen to what this guy here has to say. Listen to this NFL you know, because I'm trying to prep him up. He's he's only 16 years old. You know, he's got two more years in high school, man. And and so, you know, we got an invitation from uh, uh, Duke, who's a coach out there, O-Line Masterminds. You guys check that out, you know, uh, on their Instagram and follow them. And out of that, Joey, it was like only two high school kids that were invited. And uh, Samson was one of them. Wow. I had no idea what the hell I was going to. Okay. You know what I mean? All I knew was like, okay, you know, uh, uh, what is this thing here? Because I want him to do the work. You know, I want him to let me know what's happening. So, you know, if he can uh, dig his head into researching uh, what it is and show me some type of interest, and then I'm down for it, with supporting him. And so we went there, and it's a two-day event. You know, it was on uh, July the the. Uh, July the the twelfth and July the thirteenth, mm-hmm. and they had it over there at the uh, uh, Academy of Stars, where the Dallas Cowboys they train and where they practice at. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know and uh, and so the first day, they had their scheduling everything. It was like ten in the morning. You got to sign in at eleven. Blah blah blah. You know, and then I was telling my wife, I said, "Listen, I think what I'm going to do to him." We're going to send him by himself on the first day. Now, keep in mind, the hotel is attached to this place right across the street. Right. You know, so people don't think that, damn, Keisha, you're brutal to send your 16-year-old boy to blah, blah, blah. But anyhow, so, you know, Samson looks like most of them tall and so forth, right? Exactly. You wouldn't even know he's a 16-year-old. Right. So, you know, when I told him, I said, listen, we got things to do. He looked at me, what, are you crazy? (laughs) So, yeah, we'll catch up with you later on. So go ahead and, you know, uh, keep in mind, he's never been there, nor right, have we. Right. But I, I wanted to test my son if he, you know, figured things out on right, his own. Right. Well, that's good. Because I always tell him, you know, dude, you know, God forbid when, you know, we hope to be here for as long as we can with you. But you have to say, you got to be prepared for anything that comes in life. And if that means us not being here, you got to be prepared for this, son. So... He, he took it on the chin, you know, he got there and, you know, he was on the table there, to, you know, so you see on some of my Instagram posts, mm-hmm. you got this young kid, but on this table, it's like a round table, like, I don't know, maybe about eight chairs. So you can imagine it's eight people, seven people, strangers he don't know, but he knows some of the NFL players that that's there, right? And then there were college players, Hall of Famers there. And uh, he texted me, that Dad, I think I'm sitting at like a $500 million table here combined with all these guys here. You know, he's already, because he's a, he, he loves math, right? Uh-huh. So he's already doing the mathematics and stuff. That is funny. But, yeah, so, yeah, and then they had to bring a notepad. So while the Hall of Famers or, 
you know, the uh, uh, NFL players were talking. They had to write notes. And then what they did after doing that, Joey, they would break up in uh, uh, sessions. Uh So when they break up in sessions, you know, they had guys like, you know, uh, you know, Bang Bang 49er Jesse Sapolo was in the house. Okay. And so we'd walk over, he'd walk over there, and he Jesse would do like a QA. and a You know, certain guys and then other group of guys, you know, be 10, 15 on a different, you know, Hall of Famer. And they would, it was so cool because they would give advice, you know, to college players. To Now, keep in mind, there's only two kids that was invited from high school out of this whole country to come to this O-line masterminds that they do annually for pros, NFL players, and college players. And there were only two 16 years old wow. kid. And Samson was one of them from Notre Dame High School. Wow. And so big shout out to his coach at Notre Dame, you know, uh, uh, putting in the plug for Samson. So it was great. We was out there for two two days. And first day he did it all on his own. I was proud of him. And then the second day, of course, you know, I'm coming over there and, uh, you know, I was eager to kind of see what's happening, you know. We got there. We, you know, we met the, the whole crew there. We met some... Uh, um, some sponsors that are out there for big guys' clothes. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it was awesome to be able to uh, uh, meet these cats out there. You know, a lot of the you know Hall of Famers and so forth. So it's an annual thing. And uh, man, you know, it, it, for the Fatus, myself, my son, and my wife. You know, it was the first time that we really stepped into like a professional NFL setting of behind the scenes. You know, the, we did before 49ers game, first time me and my son went and we were on the field and, you know, it's that father-son time. Mm-hmm. You know, Samson was, uh, I don't know, 14 years old then and we were right there on the field and it's, I don't know, it's it's, it's me that kicks into a, that teaching thing, you know what I mean? It's like, hey man, you, you're right in it. You're 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 within you know reach right now. This is you know soak all this in, and so that was on the field during the game. But to be behind the scenes, uh, behind the scenes, was a different you know experience, and you learned a lot, man. A lot of these guys here, you know, uh, NFL players, uh, you know, all the football players in general, high school and and the college guys that were there, you know, they were like you know six nine. You know, every bit of 325, man, these guys. Wow. But everything was technique, Joey. They were talking about just techniques and stuff. And, you know, the word, you know, longevity came to my mind, you know. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys being injured, you know. And so, you know, Jesse gave us a pretty good pointer. Uh, had a chance to talk with my son. And, uh, you know, he was just talking about, you know, a lot of times the uh, old lines, they have a longer career than most uh, people, that uh, most athletes in the industry, because mm-hmm. they they're there at the O line. They block a lot of guys like you know the running backs and those that are receivers. You know they catch the ball, they get banged up, right? Even the linebackers they get banged up, and those that are on defense. <laughs> and so I I had no idea that Samson has been researching about O-line. Wow. And that's the reason why, to this day, you know, he's been playing like, you know, um, offensive lineman, left tackle. And one of his favorite players uh, is Trent Williams, who was the highest paid athlete football offensive lineman in NFL until one of the Samoan cats from, uh, I forgot, forgive me his name, but he is Samoan dude who plays for Detroit Lions. And he's an offensive lineman who's one of the highest paid offensive linemen now. And so in the meantime, you know, I bring this up because, you know, he's been doing the research. And so to me, he's locked in. He educated himself about the numbers, about longevity of the linemen. He showed interest, you know. Uh, So, you know, let's, uh, you know, uh, I want to, you know, I'm I'm very proud of him. I want to see how long he's going to go with it. And, you know, 
I always tell them too, and, and I got to throw it out there because, you know, the family, we're in the family business of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. A lot of people always, hey, is your son going to go? Or is this son going to go? It's, I never can say no, right? I, I, I always say never say never. And my B plan is always this. Just in case football, whatever doesn't, you know, you know, whatever the case it may be, right? Just know that this door here will always be here. I'd rather not you come through this door because to me it's like, okay, I, I got enough of the boys that are in it. I just don't want to see them go through what, you know, what I've went through, right? But now, you know, he sees his older brothers going through it. And it's like, you know, so there's always a B plan. We Anybody... Listen, we always got a B plan in life in general, right? Because we never know. Our A plan might not go through for whatever reason. And then at the end of the day, we need to have this B plan. And, of course, that'll be, you know, his B plan. So we'll see, you know. He might come through as, uh, you know, uh, jacked up. You know, he's supposed to be my tallest, biggest boy at 6'8". So he's already 6'5 now. At 16 years old, size 16 shoes, 260 pounds. Wow. Notre Dame, this is the plug for my boy. This is your youngest son. The Samson. youngest, uh, the, 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 the baby. <laughs> the baby of the whole crew. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Wow. So, Shout out to Big Samson. I man. know it, man. So I'm very proud of my boy. You know, he's very doing the work. Future. He's actually out right now with his Uncle Reno, his Auntie Tiffany, and, you know, his sister Vaughn. You know, they've been babies growing up and since they were in, in diapers. And now to see these two, you know, just, you know, you see him on fun. It's like, yeah. she's, you know, plays for Georgetown. Yeah. She's in volleyball, got a scholarship out that away. Very smart girl. And, uh, you know, it's good to see them living their best life. You know, at the age that she, she's 17, he's 16. And, yeah. man. They're out there in DR. They're sending me pictures. It's like, there's a freaking big mansion with a swimming pool in it and got a cook over there and the wow. food is delicious. Wow. I was waiting for the oxtails to come up. <laughs> they, <laughs> they never posted that, but, you know, they're having a good time and it's just good to, uh, to see them enjoy, you know, their best life, so. Well, that's good. Yeah. It's good so. to see them uh, treat them treating themselves. That's that good. was huh? my, my weekend. Yeah, okay. At the Texas, you know. Well, got, well, well, got back on Sunday, and he left Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah, so right on the plane, man. So, and here we are. Right on. That's right. Here we are. We're and I tell you what, it's, uh, are you ready to take some questions? We oh, got, well, we, who we, they got? We got a caller from uh, last week, actually, the call that dropped. Yeah. You know, they weren't uh, ready to fire off. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah. They're here tonight to fire off a question. Lucy, please uh, state where you're from and uh, state your question. I'm from Nifid, Ohio, and my question is, what's the best advice you have for me to uh, start wrestling? Um, how old are you, Lucy? <laughs> Pardon? I'm 13. Okay, well, first of all, you got to finish your, your school. Let's concentrate on the, uh, your A plan. Uh, your education is very important because... Uh, be it wrestling or any sports that, uh, you know, you decide to do, you know, you, you get hurt in sports. All athletes get hurt. Um, but when you do turn that age of, you know, I'm assuming 15 or 16, you know, your parents would have to sign a release for you to train. You know, you, I would uh, recommend you go to a, a reputable school. You know, you, you kids have Google now. You guys can Google your trainer. You know, see what he knows where he's been or she's been. And then you go from there. I, I mentioned this before, you know, Joey. Uh, you know, some kids don't do not do it because it's convenient to them. Like two blocks down the street, your buddy has a ring. When you know the Samoans are down the street two hours, you know, where would I rather take my kids? I'd rather take them to that, to that school, rather than, you know, two blocks down the street. So, <clears throat> That'll be uh, uh, my answer for you is, uh, you know, uh, do your research, Google the person, your coaches, and then just sit down, find out, you know, uh, you know, you can see the place, you know, 
if they welcome you, you know, with open arms and they're not just trying to rush you to get, you know, get your, you know, your uh, tuition or whatever the case they charge, you know, you can tell and, and uh, most definitely take your parents because you're young uh, so they can kind of feel these trainers out and and uh, see what type of atmosphere it is. But first, you got to finish your school at the age of 13, okay? All right. Yeah, 13 years old. Man, you know what I mean, so I mean wrestling is always going to be around for her. Would you really, really yeah. support Samson if he wanted to wrestle? Like, I know you would support him, but like, because I know you really, like, you know, he's yeah. that's your baby. Yeah. But if Samson really wanted to join the family business, would you fully support it, or would you, ra- or would you rather rather him lean towards football? No, well, I, of course, I'd rather lean towards something else first. Mm-hmm. But this is at the last, last Copy. resort. Yeah. Like, okay, you know. Of course, he, he would have to come ask me first about it to show some type of interest. But mm-hmm. you know what I mean. But you know, I, you know, I just I knock on wood. You know, my boys that are there now, uh, that you know, they they've all gotten hurt, broken bones and surgeries and stuff like that. But the last thing I want to see is I get that call. One of my kids got like a gnawing heart. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. That's how real professional wrestling is to me. Yeah. The last thing I want to hear is that one of my boys, you know, you know, something happened to them, can no longer walk, can no longer speak, you know. And so the real, real part in this industry of professional wrestling where fans look at it as entertainment and, well, the families that have wrestlers in the industry we see it different this is what i i see this is what we all go through is the hope that when you walk out that that gorilla position the ring you know come out the curtains with your music playing you didn't walk out there or roll out there in a wheelchair so you definitely don't want to come back in no wheelchair you know, and so that's why it's so important, like this young lady calling, what advice? You need to train and perfect your craft, the ins and outs of this business, because it's not a game, man. It's it definitely not a game. People that that don't respect the industry, they laugh at us, they laugh at the business, and all they want to see is what they want to see, who their heroes, who their villains, whatever the case may be. But as far as tapping into what the lives that each professional wrestler go to on a daily, the sacrifice, the commitment, you know, the, the marriages, the family. Like, some people don't make it like that together, you know? The family member breaks up because of whatever the case it may be. That's so much strain on the on a wrestler's family. You know, they think, okay, you make this money, great. You know, you got a great paycheck every week, great. But can money buy happiness? When your other half or your girlfriend or whoever's at home while you're on the road 200-something day, this for you, baby. I come home, look what you got. But at the end of the day, they miss you. So what happens? A few drinks happens. Start crying. We've seen this shit like a movie. Here comes the best friend, or here comes the next door, next door neighbor. I don't mean to happen, but this happened. And what is it? You know, it, it, that's that's the sacrifice, the commitment that these wrestlers, us, we go through. And you got to have a strong mind to be able to survive this on both sides, both ways. You know. Your girl, your family, she got to understand why you out there. You got to understand why you out there. You, you know, it'll come a time where you we riding. You, you know, people see divas on wrestling. Hot as hell, right? Mm-hmm. Damn, she look hot. Lord, what would I do if I had just a few minutes with this chick here, mm-hmm. right? And so you riding with this girl here without no makeup, what people don't see, and you're like, damn, creature feature. <laughs> Right? It's like, damn, you don't even look like the girl you see on TV. Right? The <laughs> fact of the matter. Creature right? Creature. And they ride together, right? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, bam, something happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
there goes, man. So, so all that time, you, you know, when you were an indie wrestler, you had a person stand by you through thick and thin, man. Finally, you get there. Now you get caught up in all the clout, Joey. That shit just all just clouds your mind. I'm on top of the world, baby. I can get whatever I want. I don't need people no more. And hey, that's where you go wrong. That's where you fall to the to the pits of professional wrestling. Because if you don't got your soul and your mind right and your purpose, hey, come on with it. You better see it coming a mile away, man. Think long, it'll come to you. Because wow. not study wrong, study long, you in trouble. All right? So yes, those sir. are my words. I put that whole sum up because I'm sure this 13-year-old girl you know, she's probably still listening. And, you know, that's for everybody out there, the independent, you know, workers that are out there grinding, driving five hours for $30, $20 for gas money. Some ain't even get paid. You know what I mean? So you you got to be doing this for a purpose and for a reason, man. And when you finally get there, you know what time it is. You remember those. Not that you have to turn around and get back because you do have family members They'll play that card. Mm. Hey, I need your help. Okay. Well, you said that last month. Well, uh, I said I was going to pay you. Uh, yeah, but because right now you got bad credit with me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So even your family members, mm -hmm. like sometimes that's that's real talk, right? I bet. Because they hit the nerve. Like you, It's like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Mm -hmm. Your credit to me is starting to really get like, you know, below 600, below 400s. You know what I mean? And so, but that's that. You know what I mean? Uh, we we can go on and talk about this this type of thing that happens in professional wrestling. It just, you know, just be aware of a lot of that. Yes, sir. I'd like to touch uh, really quick on, because um, you're kicking, as always, kicking knowledge. Yeah. Uh, for, there are independent wrestlers, uh, workers. Um, yeah. My peers, actually, who watch this show. Shout out to a lot of y'all. Um, and this question comes up a lot uh, when looking for a good school. Now, uh, in my firsthand experience, I know Knox Pro is a gold mine when it comes to knowledge between you, Reno, David. Yeah, 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 that's like over thirty. Uh, that's a thirty. Orlando 90, Jordan. 90, yes, sir. That was before Remember my that? time, but yeah, but nine. That's like over ninety years of knowledge combined. So you hit the gold mine if you do pick. Uh, and I'm not. I'm not just saying that. Maybe I am being biased. Fuck it. But uh, yeah. you do hit the gold mine. We tell it like it is. When you come here, because yeah. you name what other school? I mean, besides maybe like the Dudleys or some of them, but what, what other schools got that? Booker T. Man, uh, yes, in Texas. Houston, that's yeah. right, reality of wrestling. Um, that, so there's not, there's not too many. My question to you is this. How important is it for a trainer to have, a, a, you know, been successful? Like, what if he never made it to the big leagues? But damn it, this dude's a good worker. Like, how important is it to walk up to a school... And and the trainer's never been anywhere, done anything, but he's really f good. Yeah. Uh, versus man, somewhere like Knox Pro, where every the trainer have has f Hall of Famer. Well, you know what? I, I uh, to me it does it okay. When I say do the research on a person, mm -hmm. like where's he been? You know, I'm, I'm talking all the way around. Doesn't necessarily like, you know, some of the best workers can be like unseen workers that used right. to be with WWE or. Sure with the big companies, right? They just never had the spotlight on them, right. but they were so good that they kept them around because they can teach the new generation that are coming through, or they can, you know, they can uh, be with that new talent that's coming through to work on all the house shows. You follow me? Yes, sir. So that new talent gets, he starts to, you know, see progress because he's being taught by this guy here or this, this uh, girl, right? And so that's what I mean there. Like, doesn't matter really. Like, okay, we just, for Knox Pro, we are fortunate to have uh, uh, recognition uh, with with the trainers that are here. You know, we've been there. We've done that. You know, we got resumes, you know, as far as you know, the 405 freeway here. You know what I mean? But but for those that, you know, uh, that are, have not been spotlighted, they too have long, you know, long resumes, be, meaning year-wise in the industry, right? And so, you know, and 
those that are listening that who I'm saying the trainers are, you know, my my thing that uh, that I only can encourage them is that, you know, don't take it out on, on the students when they come to your school, you know what I mean, to try to live through, you know, it's hard for them to know who you are because they never really see you on TV, but yet your teaching is 100%, right? So, you know, a lot of times these type of trainers, they, you know, they kind of take it out on the kids, you know, frustrations. Yeah. Some kids they see that has, has talent, can be somebody, then they would favoritize that one kid or that one girl and almost kind of live their career through them because they see them as star, they can see star power in them that, you know, number one, if if they recommend this kid to WWE or AEW, well, obviously they're going to get the recognition, the rub from the school. Right. Where was that? Then here it goes again. Oh, who runs that school? Oh, his name is blah, blah, blah. Oh, who was that? Oh, he used to. Now you got to explain Right. So that right there for me can help these type of schools with these people here that never really got the spotlight because the spotlight can come through their students somehow. Right. Depending how how honest they teach them, like, you know, be real with them. Like, you know, don't look at them at the students, you know, uh, as as a, as a tuition. Right. Because you're, I get it. You're trying to pay bills with, right. uh, you know, your school and you know everything that comes with an academy. I get it, right? But I think the way for a school uh, to be successful in having a lot of students is they need to see progress. They need to see like when they signed up with your school, they didn't know. Shit. Three months later, wow, they see it from a wrestler's eye now. And that's what we say here. We have a lot of students that come through the green as hell. I tell them I don't I don't train PlayStation wrestlers. But at the at while training is going, I always like to see within three months, because we have a seven months program here. Mm -hmm. Within three months I like to see progress. Mm -hmm. And this is where it helps me find them. They find us. Yes, sir. Right? So you know, so you know, to answer your question, Joey you know, uh, that would be, you know, in a long-term type of answer what I was, uh, you know, yep. trying to answer your question. So, but just, you know, have, have a feel them out, have, have passion, you know, walking through the doors, you know, be a sponge when you walk into these different trainers, be respectful, you know what I mean? And, you know, you can, you know, learn a lot just by shutting your mouth, open your ears and open your eyes and just listen. You know, if you listen, you're not you're not stupid. You know, you're not like your dumb kid or dumb girl walking in there. Uh, you guys are young, grown adults, so you can hear bull from real talk. If you hear bull, well, then there's no reason for you to be there. You know, I mean, you you, you work hard for your money nine to five. You probably get paid every two weeks. Why would you want to pay for something that you feel it's bull? Mm. Just trust your gut, trust your instinct, and, uh, you know, go from there. If anything, bet on yourself. Yes, sir. One of the, and this is such a small detail, but one of the many things I love about my time at Knox Pro and learning and stuff is Knox Pro is the only school I've ever noticed to not allow students to wear wrestling shirts in the ring. Hey. Like, what are you, if someone, what I, what I mean by that is, uh, you can't roll to training at Knox Pro in a Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt or a Rockers shirt or a Kamala shirt because they're training you to be, to be pros now. It's okay to be a fan. We're all fans. That's why we do it. But the difference is, I mean, you know, you're in, you're training to be a pro now, so you got to put that to the side. And I've noticed in my travels, Knox Pro is the only school that does that. Yeah, and I think it's it's uh, it's teaching them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're always going to be fans of it. But mm -hmm. now you're on the inside looking out. So while you're on the inside, you got to think like inside. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not going to walk into, you know, these type of habits. 
you're definitely not going to walk into a WWE locker room <laughs> wearing, uh, you know, Stone Cold or yeah, uh, right. The Rock's T-shirt, right? And and you're and you're part of the company. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, so we might as well cut those habits here. You know, this is where, you know, I always want all of everybody to make their mistakes in these four walls. Yep. You know, because if I don't see the mistakes and let them be themselves and help cut that here, man, can you imagine they walk out that way and, right. you know, damn, look at, look at that, look at that freaking Mark over there. Yeah, he, yeah. He's just a big fan of who and who. He don't get it. Where was he trained? Oh, Kishi and them school and Knox Pro and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, they have, you know, definitely, if they was trained in this school here, they wouldn't be wearing that. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? No small detail like just that. Just those things. It's, yeah. it's to help them. Yep. Yes, sir. And then, you know, what we do, like, I always like to, it's like when I put out a list for those that uh, go be extras for WWE. Mm-hmm. You know, we've done a little bit for AEW. But for me, for you guys, like, I've always want you kids to go to WWE. You know, WWE is our home. Yep. We have a, a good relationship with the WWE. And it's always going to be there. The show. I don't care what new company comes up, what another new company comes up two, three years from now. WWE will never, ever, ever go anywhere. And so at the end of the day, it's like, you know, when we get these uh, extras, you know, when they request, you know, for extras, Mm -hmm. I love to take uh, some of you kids that you've experienced that to where you go and you kind of, for me, it's to let them see how everything works behind the scenes, you know, but always be ready. You know, some of them, they're always never, I tell them, take your gear. You never know. Yep. You're going to be an extra, but extra can mean anything. Yep. You might be, you know, on TV. You might not. You might be an extra behind. You might not. But at the end of the day, your eyes and your ears, you're watching how everything works. Yeah. works behind the scene. Yeah. And then plus you get to have, you know, the best catering that WWE can offer every TV. Mm. So at the end of the day, you'll get a meal. You'll get to be able to see how everything works behind the scenes. And and then it kind of, you know, for me, it kind of, hopefully it'll spark their interest. Yes, sir. Like, damn it. You know, I want to be here now working for this company. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I too can be like her or him, you know? And so, you know, we, we've we continued to do that here for well over, I don't know, 17, 18 years, you know. And uh, Miro was one of them. He t- we took him down there, and Rusev, you know, everybody knew him as Rusev. We know him as Miro. Mm-hmm. And uh, look, at, look at Miro. He's, Miro's a millionaire now. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he's He's been gone from WWE, I don't know, four years or however long. But... He comes here, you know, that's what I love about that kid. He'll come here and still train students here at Knox Pro. The same kid that left is the same kid that came back, just like you, Joey. Yes, sir. Same way. And that makes me proud because it makes me understand that you kids are still uh, carrying your training on with you, be it in the wrestling ring and your business, your daily lives, and so forth. And so that's the thing that you do get not only from Knox Pro, but these reputable schools like Booker T or, you know, uh, up there. And uh, you can either go up to uh, Ken Anderson up in, you know, Minnesota that way, you know, or they got, you know, the Japan Dojo out here in Los Angeles. Right. Jesse Hernandez, you know, the Santino brothers, you know, they, they, there's, you know, those guys too as well, you know. So, but, you know, don't don't close the doors, uh, your options, Go try all school because you can learn a little bit from this school, that mm. school, this school. And then, you know, some learn quick, some take time to learn. Yes, sir. You know, so that's the that's the that's the four one one of what it is with this uh with this uh wrestling academy school type of thing. So I got a question about yeah. d- uh WWE catering. Do you think that's where uh, the Simone Werewolf Jacob Atu is spending a lot of his time right now? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he probably has a Ziploc bag. <laughs> Some, some some habits don't change. You know bruh, what I mean? bruh, can, like, can I take this? Yeah, can I, I can yeah. take can this I get for real? Can I get some? Yeah, uh, uh, hey, you know what I mean? And it's good to it's good to hopefully see Jacob. You know, 
enjoying uh, enjoying the catering at WWE because damn it, he damn sure paying for it now, man. <laughs> I you can only imagine man. right can now. Can you imagine? Bro, can I take this back to the room? Yeah, For yeah. real, it's good? Yeah. Oh, man. You know what? You Speaking can imagine of, uh, Solo and the Twins, uh, you know, or Roman Reigns. Like, yeah, you ain't got to eat. Dude, I'll, I'll buy you some food now. <laughs> you know? Yo, uh, speaking of the Samoan Werewolf Jacob Fought 2, man, yeah. on SmackDown, he finally busted out the moves you've been talking about. The world finally got to see... Uh, not finally got to see, but the world got to see what we've all been seeing for all these yeah. years now. Jacob Fadu finally was moving like a cruiserweight out there. He came out and destroyed uh, the the DIY guys. He destroyed Austin Theory. Uh, man, what a, a, an impressive uh, ep episode of SmackDown for him to come out. And, of course, the bloodline, Sol Sokoa, still showing their dominance. Yeah. I don't think they're going to slow down anytime soon. No, it's good to see Jacob in his... You know, if you know Jacob like we know him. Yes, sir. He was in his element then. That, that's how he works, right? And you can tell everything that he did out there was just so perfection. Like he was in it. I, I, keep, I keep seeing him. I'm not used to seeing him work with boots. Boots, right. Right? And so yeah. he's still doing those, you know, those uh, top rope uh, maneuvers, you know, from the top. But now the only difference is, is with boots. Yeah. And the only difference is... You're in front of a WWE crowd TV. Yeah. So, you know, the knock on wood, you know, he hasn't fumbled the ball, you know, on any moves and so forth. But Jacob is smooth enough that if in case he did mess up a move on live TV mm -hmm. or taping, mm -hmm. he, you know, he's a he's a man with many attitudes. Yeah. So he can definitely get away with like, he, you know, who knows? He'll probably just look at the camera and, and growl at the camera or something. Right. But, yeah, he looked very, very comfortable, and I'm glad now, you know, as he's going through these house shows, yeah, which they don't televise, and, you know, we, we see a lot of that, you know, that, you know, when wrestlers go out there, you know, it's your way of perfecting your craft and finding it, and, you know, he's going to find the WWE universe, and the universe is definitely going to find Jacob, because now Jacob's brand, his first time around, Meaning everywhere he goes, this is going to be his first time around. By the time Jacob comes back the second time around, you can rest assured it's going to be a different Jacob. More relaxed. More understanding how WWE Universe works. More understanding how the company works. What it is is when they're traveling and so forth. You know what I mean? As far as like he, he's going to learn to his rest is going to be... Very, very important. You know what I mean? Here in Independent, where we get booked, I don't know, once or twice a week. I mean, once or twice a month. Not not WWE. Jacob's going to be on the road for a long time. You know, and so the thing is, like, you know, by the time this kid comes back round two into these same buildings, you, you're definitely going to tell the difference. So I can't wait for us to go. I like to go see, I've yet to go see a live event. You know, when they do come to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. I would like to go see him, you know, just kind of see how he operates, see how he works in a, in a live WWE crowd, you know. And so he's got a pretty good uh, warm up since, you know, since he's debuted. So I would think by the time he gets here, he'd be straight primed up and ready to, you know, mm -hmm. tear the house down. Yes, sir. Um Extra large, Jacob. The the, the t shirt that yeah, you, you got going on. The number X, one, the number X. one most uh, sold uh, shirt on a WWD shot dot com so. right now. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, he's over like Rover because uh, uh, a few things. Uh, just as a not just as a stranger view, going through my timeline, it's all Jacob Fatu. too. Wow. Uh, and and there's memes too. So he's crossing over. So uh, Garen Damteed, he's going to be a huge star. We're, we're moving into SummerSlam. Your son, Sol Sokoa, is going up in a, in a heavyweight uh, championship bout up against, uh, uh, oh, my goodness, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> I almost, I almost uh, fumbled right there. Cody Rhodes. Mm. Um, and the poster that That's dropped. That's how excited you are about that match. <laughs> Hey, you forgot no, about no, Cody's... No, 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 it's this. No, it ain't. It's because like, I'll tell you what. Uh, that... Cody. Cody Rhodes. Oh my, oh my God! Oh my God! Did you see Cody Rhodes when he was tied up in the ropes uh, on SmackDown? Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear him? Take me! 
Yeah. Take me. Take me. I thought that was dope because I, I'm a fan of 80s Take fucking action movies. <laughs> Take me where? <laughs> What, he, what he's implying was because they they put Orton through the table, okay. like they put Paul Heyman to the table. Okay, so they're uh, they're he's saying take they're, him, put him like through the, the table. Meaning, meaning, don't mess with Randy Orton. Put him down. Take me. Put me through the table. But hey, the Randy, way Randy's a python. The yeah. way he was tied up in the ropes. Yeah, and, and, and the, the, the whole I don't know. It reminded me of like an '80s cop movie. Like yeah. you know, it, it was. Just, I loved it. I loved the cheesiness of it. But well, um, sure, you loved it. You didn't even remember the name he's. <laughs> who Solo's working for? I fumbled a little with. bit. I fumbled a little bit. It's been a rough <laughs> yeah. week, so you know. So I'm, they're I'm, working what in SummerSlam? SummerSlam, yeah. August the third, it goes down, right? And you saw the the poster that came out. The poster that dropped was fire. What was it? It was it was your son uh, riding passenger in the in, in some kind guess. of uh, low low, and then it, it was right, Tama like, behind the wheel, like a convertible Lincoln, black yeah, Lincoln. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Okay. Jacob in the back yeah, with uh, uh, Tonga Loa. <laughs> Yeah, that looked like a rap album. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm gonna say, man, the, the bloodline is is looking pretty good. Headed in, uh, they're sitting fancy. Uh, headed into uh, you know what? I, would, I almost see the bloodline 2.0. Mm -hmm. I almost see them like, you know, kind of switch it up. You know, they they all got can have long hair. Except for uh, Solo can still stay what what he's got, right? He he almost got like that Iceman. Uh, what's his name for MMA? Uh, I was going to say King Parsons? No, no, not King Parsons. Come, uh, what y'all know about King Parsons? Give me UFC. I'm going to give trivia to you. UFC, they called him the Iceman. Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell. Right? Okay, so Chuck Liddell. Kind of, you kind of see Seffa like that, right? Yes, sir. But yeah. I almost see the other three. Possibly made me another guy there. But almost like let their hair grow long. But having, remember how Booyah Tribe used to look like? Yes, sir, of course, yeah. Long yeah, hair, yeah, so. mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Show all their tats and stuff, but jacked up. Mm. Get those Godfather brims and cut the top of the brim off. Don't see me like a uh, like gangster. Yeah, just 2.0. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's moved into a new wave. Uh, and then this way, if and when the original bloodlines come through, which would be Roman. I would think the the twins will probably get back because they're not doing a damn thing with Yeet, you know. You already see all that. What I, my, my, my opinion is why, right? Why do you not push and give the most popular baby face in my eyes, be it my son or not, if the Yeet master or the Yeet man is over, why? why? How, how come? What, what is the problem? Not giving this guy, uh, you know, some type of title, something, win something. It, it'd only be good for business, wouldn't it? Absolutely. That's, that's what they say. It's good for business. Yes, absolutely. Right? You know, Big Keish, I'm yeah. glad you mentioned that. Um, you know what? Speaking of the Yeet Man, um, and, you know, I'm going through my timeline. Uh, today and yesterday is, yeah. is a... a, a, a uh, conversations we've had on this show talking about this very subject on Money in the Bank, the, right. uh, the Royal Rumble. Um, but you know what? The w websites out there, you know, um, take you guys should uh, take note. Uh, websites like SportsKita.com and mm. uh, WrestleInc.com, they, they actually link uh, the podcast when they mention our, what we're talking about. So yeah. web, uh, stories out there, glad you're talking about uh, us, but be sure to... Uh, link the show when you're talking about uh, exactly what uh, Big Keish is talking about and a lot of his quotes just please quote the show that's all uh, but SportsKita and WrestlingInc.com <laughs> you guys shout out to y'all because you, uh, I see it y'all directly link and you make sure people give credit to the show yeah. but I've seen what we're talking about right now about uh, how you feel about your son uh, Jay and not getting these chances because uh, no everyone knows he's over like Rover and his time is now um, so it's, it's, it, we're still yet to see because going into SummerSlam, there's really no solid plans with, with, with the Yeet Man. Yeah, Although yeah. I know this, the Yeet Man has got his eye on a certain mommy. Cause if you were tuning okay. in to Rob. <laughs> so <laughs> if you were that, <laughs> let me, let me ask, let me ask you or ask everybody else this. Yes, sir. Is that the best they got? Is the number one in my eyes. And just, I mean, it, again, you know, this thing hits. It, it, I get. He should hot be contending when I, for gold. I get right hot now. when I'm talking about yes, this sir. because whether it's my son or somebody else, this kid worked hard. 
not say everybody else in, but damn it, in this industry, you work hard to when you finally find that. They 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 conquered the tag team. What else is there to do? Now he breaks off at Z, right? He does this thing here. And then yet it's not like they're giving the gas pedal to him, man. It's like, you know, it's almost like I want to come back with that promo I did a while back. You know, now I can add, you know, uh, Jay Uso has been held down. Yeah, you talk about the Great White you know, Hype promo. You know, High Chief Peter Maivia has been held down. Afonsiga has been held down. Rikishi has been held down. But damn it, I said that interview 25 or something years ago, and now we've come up to 2024. And now we got a bloodline that's been held down? Come on, why? Give me a good explanation why. And for those of y'all that, you know, uh, that's been posting up about, you know, this podcast and, you know, uh, not giving us credits about what I'm saying about it, you know what I mean? Like, do the right thing here. You know, tell the story, plug it into it so people can hear from my mouth, yep. but not from what you're typing. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's not let's not steal, you know, steal, uh, you know, uh, uh, stories from blah, blah, blah. But, you know, my mm. is not a story. Mm. Mine's is all facts, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if we want to we want to play that again and talk about it. <laughs> I tell you one thing, man. I, I got you know hairs on the back of my neck every time I watch it. You know, not okay. SummerSlam. Where is he? Ah, let's go. I don't know. Let's write him in that he likes mommy. <laughs> mommy, that's the best that those you know writers got. Let's write this guy into a relationship with mommy. What y'all trying to do? Break his marriage up? Y'all can't put him in a good storyline. So what you gonna do now? You know, God forbid you guys try to tell him or tell her tongue kiss each other on on Raw. That better not happen. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, there's so much that, you know, when it comes to the bloodline, man, this is this is this is what gets me like going. I, this is why I tell the bloodline when people talk about the bloodline, oh, we tired of the bloodline. You can be tired all you want for a few years. Right. But we've been going through this for 75 plus years right you don't think we tired but we we're the type of people we tired but we keep coming back we keep finding solutions not excuses solutions and the solutions need to be the best you can be in that squared circle otherwise if we're not over in the squared circle move us out i was just gonna say that aren't you pretty much telling others to step up be better than you 100 percent 100%. If you can put asses in seats, if you can knock those merchandise sales out, if you can bring up WWE's revenue, TKO's revenue, if the bloodline is not that anymore, I get it. I get it, y'all. Do Go ahead and just knock it then. But you cannot, you cannot knock the bloodline that's been holding professional wrestling company as WWE on their backs hmm. for the last four to five, six years now. And they still holding it without the main guy there. Who's the main guy? Roman's Roman mother Reigns. Reigns. Come on. Y'all can write that. Write that. Because when he does come back, oh, you, you, you better have enough uh, armor trucks to fill up that bank account for, for WWE. TKO. Have enough, because this man here is just going to sell out everywhere, everywhere and anywhere throughout the world that WWE puts him to, right? That's not to mention the, the Usos when they come back. That's not to mention maybe another Bloodline member, possibly, possibly may be able to drive up in a black Lincoln. I'll leave it at that, damn it. Hey, we can do it all. We can do it any type of way. I guess we can we, do it any type of way. Wow. Um, Big Keish, I... <laughs> See, you asked me about the yeet, get me all fired up now, you know? That's what I... That old time of Reggie, let's, well, get, let's get wild and fired up. I tell you what, You know, Memphis, Tennessee. Before we let you go, uh, and, and let's, let's talk about 
some bloodline members who who are are not uh, there uh, yet. They're uh, wrestling in the uh, independents, not yeah. caught up to the big leagues yet. Yeah, you're stuttering. Who? You're stuttering. <laughs> That's because I'm a very excited, very excited. What I'm talking independent about independent wrestling. There's yeah. Zilla. There's Zilla. Yeah. There's Journey. Yep. There's Lance. Yep. And and somebody that I've seen get some attention lately, which I'm always excited about because I love your son, Tamiko. Yeah. So out of out of all those, um, I'm, we already know how you feel about Zilla. You said he needs about another two years, two three yeah. years to you know get there and get ready. Yeah. Uh, what about Lance, Journey, and uh, Tamiko? Uh, out of those three, Tamiko can can kind of be in that that same category with Zilla. Um, Lance is primed. Um, Journey can get away with. Uh, Journey can adapt. Uh, he, he's uh, WWE material right now. You know, but Journey doesn't look like the rest of us. You know, Journey, you know, he, Journey has his own look, right? So I would think if they if they do decide to pick up Journey Fatu, which is Jacob's brother, his younger brother, you know, Journey's psychology is to the roof, so A on that. You know, Journey is not a liability, A on that. Um, he's, a, he's a hard worker, A on that. He has passion about the business, A on that. He's a safe worker, A plus on that. And he gets it psychology wise, you know, A plus plus on that. Mm. And so it's only now, you know, is the way he looks. He's different. He's a little bit heavier than most of the, the, the bloodlines that are there now. You know, he's kind of like me and Yoko's body back in the day, right? But Journey can move. He was light, you know, he's very light on his feet. And he's very athletic uh, for a kid that, I, I don't know, I mean, Jenny looks like he's 300, 320 pounds maybe at 6'3", at, 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 uh, yeah. and can move like, my goodness, he can move, you know? And so so, so that, I, at Lance, Lance is chiseled down now. You know, I seen him in Thanksgiving there in, uh, in Atlanta at my son's place. He looks good. He looks like he's dedicated, like he's got his mind focused now, you know, because he, he sees the picture. There could be an opportunity for these guys to jump right on in into the storyline. You don't have to start from the bottom. Mm. You're just going to come in and boom, you're right there with the, with the bloodline, right? And so all the stuff behind the scenes, I'm sure the WWE has got to check all that, make sure that, you know, they're good, make sure they're not liability, make sure... As we're, we got that reputation in Samoans, right? You know, we'll f you up. You know, uh, don't, don't, you know, don't, you know, those Samoans, man, blah, blah, blah. Those Samoans. It was always that, but it never, when it comes time to working, right? you don't ever talk about us that way. Right. Them Samoans are good. Them Samoans, this and that. Just, you know, just a bunch of just, you know, gutless, backstabbing, you know, that. You know, these certain wrestlers. You know, they, 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 they get nervous when, you know, they want to be that. They want to be that, but yet you can't beat this work. You know what I mean? You can't beat what, you know, we just, I'm sure the bloodline for years now, you know, ain't nobody really going to go tell them like, hey, man, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, there's a lot of just, you know, two faces looking at that, like, smile in your face and, you know, stab you in your neck. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a whole new, it's a whole new different vibe now, man. You know, I know back in the day when the Attitude Era, you had us and Haku and you know Big Yoko and you know Big Samu and you know even further than that, Uncle Alpha and Sika and Peter and it's Samoans. We had respect in a different way, man. You know, we can work, but we also didn't play games. We were the nicest people in the world, man, and. You know, it's always that. We're so, so nice sometimes. Or well, they put, you know, they put weight on you. Like, you know what I mean? They don't really give you the ball to run with, but we have to give them the ball because they're that damn good. Mm -hmm. We need savages like that to get this this one white boy over or this one other black dude over or this whatever. Right. Right? We need that. We need these animals. We're not animals. Well, matter of fact, we're very educated and very smart. Go go listen to the music. You know, we the ones. It is out on Spotify, Apple, all that. Go check it out. <laughs>
Big Keish, you're yes. a man on the move. So we're going to yes. wrap it up. Uh, man, did you got any final words? Hey, man, it's easy. It's real easy to be kind, right? And it's, uh, it's this. Smarten the f*** up, and I'm out.